Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the Lincoln Link Intelligent Super Gateway. This is a smart home hub that Lincoln Link have basically pumped so full of smart home goodness that they eventually ran out of cool things to do with it and threw in Home Assistant for a laugh. Oh yeah! Disgusting! Unsubscribe! This is the first consumer level smart home hub that I've ever seen that comes with Home Assistant built in. This means that you can finally bring every smart home device you own under one roof regardless of your technical skill. If you've ever wanted to get into Home Assistant but haven't dared do the whole Raspberry Pi thing, then this is an all-in-one, off-the-shelf Home Assistant solution with a dashboard built into it to boot that can control practically any smart home device on the market. And I'm not gonna lie, I am personally more excited than Harry Kim was when he realized Seven of Nine was joining Voyager. I had this midnight inspiration about reconfiguring astrometric projectors. I hope you weren't regenerating. I was not. Smooth? Are you in love with me, Ensign? Yes. Well, no. What? Then you wish to copulate? No! Yes. Let me know when you wish to resume our work. Thanks to Lincoln Link for sponsoring today's video and for sending me their intelligent super gateway. This thing works with Amazon Alexa, Google Home, and Apple HomeKit, all with no subscription. So anything I add to this gateway, I can immediately control with my voice. But it also gives me a proper smart home dashboard at my fingertips that I can add all my devices to. Right out of the box, it can control Zigbee 3.0 devices from almost any brand, Matter devices from almost any brand. Alexa, turn Matter bulb on. Okay. <laughs> Lincoln Link devices, Broadlink devices, and Wi-Fi devices, including those from Toya Smart Life. What? This is a Toya Wi-Fi plug socket from a company called Kalex. So I'm going to be interested to see if this can actually be added to, uh, to this. Let's, let's find out. Toya Wi-Fi switch, I guess? Hello. Hello! No way! Oh, okay. It works! Listen! It's ticking it on and off! No way! That whole thing now works entirely locally. Once I paired my little socket to the device, it lives on that device. I mean, normally I'd make my head explode, but it's become a bit passe. I think instead I shall raise an eyebrow to see how far up the preposterousometer it goes. That far. That preposterous. Stop making stupid cutaway jokes! That's not why I came here! Well, if wishes were fishes, we'd all cast a net. Mr. Socky, everybody's entitled to their stupid, whiny, wrong opinions. The ISG interface itself is really good, and we'll talk more about that in the next section. As a Home Assistant user, you will likely use Home Assistant as a back end and use the ISG interface as your dashboard. You can, though, just use Home Assistant and not use the ISG dashboard at all. And get this, this is insane. It comes with hacks pre-installed. Home Assistant! I've actually installed the local Toya integration onto this Android tablet and made it work. This is nuts. This is really nuts. By the way, I make videos like this every week, so if you're interested in the whole smart home thing, or in fact technology in general, why don't you consider hitting that subscribe button and dinging that bell and giving this video a thumbs up and doing all those other YouTube things that make me happy. <laughs> Out with the show. There are some caveats, of course, to the Home Assistant aspect of all this, and we'll come to those at the end of the video. In the meantime, check this out. 
In case I haven't been clear about this, you can actually add devices to Home Assistant and then have them appear in the ISG dashboard at will. This means that you can actually control Home Assistant stuff through ISG's dashboard, and the dashboard is really nice. Each device you add has a control screen to the right hand side, and whichever device you click on automatically opens up those controls for that device, which is a really nice way of doing it. I don't know why any other supplier hasn't done this so far. It looks really cool. This makes this one of the easiest and most attractive Home Assistant dashboards to date. It's like something out of Star Trek. Shut up, Wesley. Shut up, Wesley. Just as a point of clarification then, although these are two totally separate systems within one tablet, one being Home Assistant and one being the ISG dashboard, and they can operate entirely independently, they're also intrinsically linked. So, as I've said, I can add stuff to Home Assistant and then put it into the ISG dashboard, but everything I add to the ISG dashboard automatically appears in Home Assistant. This is a big deal, because it means you don't need the Toya local integration anymore, because you could add local Toya devices to the ISG dashboard and they'll automatically appear in Home Assistant and can be used in routines and automations too. This is, again, this is nuts. The ISG platform also has the ability to create really straightforward automations, which is great if you're a beginner. But, get this, if you want to use Home Assistant to create your automations instead, you still can do. Which means that if you're a more advanced user, you can just use Home Assistant, and if you're just starting out, you can use ISG instead. This is really cool. The icons can be held down and dragged around the screen so you can organize them as you wish, and each device can be put into a room to help you keep things even more organized. You can also group devices too, so you could have a lighting group that just had all of your house's lights under one banner so you can switch them all off with one button. And you can get to these groups at just one click and it is super easy to set the groups up. But because I have the link and link skill enabled, they are automatically detected and controllable via Amazon Alexa too. And I could do the same thing with Google Home and even with Apple HomeKit. This is me adding an Ajax Zigbee bulb to the ISG gateway directly without the need for Home Assistant. Even Philips, sorry, even Philips, sorry, even Philips, I'm sorry, I have a great deal of difficulty saying their name for some reason. Philips... <sighs> that company from the Netherlands. Even that company from the Netherlands can be added through the Home Assistant side of this whole thing and then added to the ISG dashboard afterwards. This is the most genius smart home device I have ever been sent. It wouldn't be right, of course, to just sit here banging on about how good it was without telling you about some of the elf... The elephants in the room. So here they are. Before we start this, I have to say I've got this thing in beta. There is a lot wrong with it, and I'm not complaining because I'm expecting there to be a lot wrong with it. So please understand that anything I'm about to tell you is probably already fixed by the time this video comes out, and if you check the description, I'm gonna write there, by the way, this is actually fixed. So I'll make a list of all the things that I'm about to tell you in the description, and I'll say which ones are fixed and which ones are still waiting to be fixed. First of all then, if I add a bulb from Home Assistant to the ISG dashboard, is there and I can turn it on and off, but I can't do things like brightness adjustment or color changing, that sort of thing. Um, I imagine if I add a set of curtains to Home Assistant and add them to the ISG dashboard, I probably won't be able to control the curtains with anything other than on off. I won't be able to set it to a percentage, for example. from the future here. Um, I've just spoken to Link and Link. I I'm in the middle of editing this video and they've just said very clearly they will definitely have this working by the time this video is released. So that's how fast they're working on it. I shall still update the description just to be on the safe side, but that's what they're saying. They reckon it's going to be fixed. The products you can add in the ISG dashboard are currently quite limited. Uh, Akara, for example, you can add Akara directly to this, which is in itself quite amazing because Akara are notoriously difficult to build integrations for, but currently the only thing you can do is a contact sensor. Again, by the time this video comes out, there might be more options, but either way, you could add the Akara stuff to Home Assistant anyway. 
The Zigbee radio that this thing uses isn't available in Home Assistant currently. This is because Link and Link could only make it so that one of the two operating systems could use it at any one time, and they obviously chose their own. But Link and Link have confirmed to me they're going to make it user selectable so that you can actually say, I want to use the Zigbee radio in Home Assistant instead of in ISG. It's not a feature yet, but it is coming. The ISG interface is still quite basic. If you add a Android TV in Home Assistant and then move that across to the ISG dashboard, you can't really do anything with it. I asked Link and Link, can we at least have the functionality to turn it on and off? And they said, no, 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 we want to give you way more than that. Please just give us some time. This is all really, really new and they will be making these updates. I have a lot of faith in Link and Link. I know people say, oh, don't, uh, don't rely on anything the manufacturer says they're going to do. Honestly, if there's any company that I do trust to actually follow through and do these things it's link and link and this is in beta right now again once this video comes out it might already be fixed last two things then as far as i know i have the production version and it doesn't have a battery in the tablet this means you have to have it powered all the time you can't pick it up and walk around with it which i think is a little bit of a shame maybe when they create version 2 this will not be a thing anymore and finally this version of home assistant they've created is an APK file. They've kind of compiled the whole thing into an Android device and therefore it is static. You can't actually update Home Assistant from within Home Assistant. If there are to be updates to Home Assistant, you will be reliant on Link and Link to get those updates. This isn't a big deal for me personally, but I know a lot of people think that updating Home Assistant is the only way you can keep it secure. And otherwise, the bad men will get you, and I just don't share that view. I don't trust it! I don't trust you! And the toaster needs to stop looking at me! It's not something I've ever been worried about. If it does worry you, I'm letting you know now. The Link and Link Intelligent Super Gateway, I believe, is available to buy now, and there are links in the description below with a discount code. It re retails at something like 160-ish pounds, and with a discount, hopefully a lot less than that. But to put this into perspective, the Homey Pro is like 400 quid. Uh, to me, that's its nearest rival. If you're looking for a touch screen setup that makes everything super easy and has control of Zigbee devices, Toya Smart Life locally, for goodness sakes, Broadlink, Link and Link devices, and pretty much anything Home Assistant can control, all under one device in tablet format, then you've come to the right place. Seriously, I would pick one up. They are absolutely awesome. In the meantime, these incredible people here are my patrons from Patreon, and without them, I wouldn't be doing this for a living. If you want to be one of those incredible people, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. Every week, I'm thanking one of these amazing people because yeah, it's the right thing to do. The wrong thing to do is to forget every week to actually write it down and have to keep going back to your desk. Bear with me a moment. <laughs> This week it's Henry Tudor, who I strongly suspect is not the real Henry Tudor. Um, I've picked him simply because he said the most lovely things, and he, uh, he's been a patron now since December, and I am just so grateful again. If anyone wants to join Henry or any of these wonderful people, again, please do so at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. These are my Facebooks and my Instagrams and my TikToks and my threads and all the other... Yeah, come and hang out there and give you best friends. See you next time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the link in link. Link in link. Try again. Stop making stupid. Whoop. <laughs>